A lot of questions in Clay County after a husband and wife were murdered, the latest in the investigation ahead. A man is charged with animal cruelty after allegedly shooting and killing a dog. Why neighbors are worried about more than just animals. And a burglary caught on tape at a Lexington store. What the owner thinks kept the thieves from taking anything. This is WKYT News at 430. Good afternoon to you. Amber Philpott and Jennifer Palumbo reporting. Sam has the afternoon off. A murder investigation is underway in southeastern Kentucky. A couple was found dead at their home in Clay County. State police say someone killed them, but they don't know who. WKYT's Phil Pendleton is tracking the investigation. It's our top story at 430. It happened about a mile east of Manchester on Birchall Road. That's off of Moppin Hollow Road. At the end of that road is where 64-year-old Leon and his 65-year-old wife, Shirley Jackson, lives. Police say they believe that both were shot and killed. Leon Jackson's brother, who says their pastor found the couple and called police, says the couple was a friendly pair and known for helping their friends and neighbors. Police say no one has been charged and their investigation is active and ongoing. Well, yesterday at approximately uh, 1 p.m., Kentucky State Police here in London received a call from the Clay County Sheriff's Office. Uh, they were advising us that they had received a call about a deceased male at a residence. Upon their deputy's arrival, they discovered uh, two deceased subjects, a male and a female. I've been learning more about the couple. Apparently, they had recently just become very active in their local church. We're going to have a lot more coming up at 530, but for now in Clay County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Police say detectives are actively searching the area to try to find clues. A Laurel County man is accused of shooting and killing a dog. Neighbors say Robert Shabel used his rabbits as live bait to lure in dogs that were roaming the neighborhood. According to an arrest citation three weeks ago, Shabel trapped a dog. The citation says when it began howling, he shot and killed it. He was arrested yesterday and charged with second degree animal cruelty and second degree wanton endangerment. Neighbors say they aren't worried about animals as much as they are children because of the daycare next door. They're not happy with what's going on, um, and their concern is their children. Shable is in jail on a $2,500 cash bond. We'll have more on this story ahead on WKYT News at 5 30. A Lexington store owner says thieves have hit his store several times, but this morning they left empty handed. <laughs> the break in at the Marathon Station on Clays Mill Road was caught on tape. Three men tried to get into the store. The owner says this is at least the fourth time someone has broken in. But this morning he believes the security alarm scared off the burglars. I just I was at home around three and I got a call from the alarm system. He said we got broken. We come over here and we find out the glass is broke. But the feet is not good inside because we have double glass. We got lucky. Police decided to patrol the area to make sure the men didn't try to break into another store. One of those officers ended up spotting a broken window at a gas station on Southland Drive. They're waiting on the owner to do inventory to see if anything was taken from that store. Lexington police say a man drove himself to the hospital after being shot in the face. The man showed up to Baptist Health on Nicholasville Road just before 4 this morning. Police say it appears the man was shot while in his SUV. They're not sure what happened. And despite being shot in the face, police say that man's injuries are non-life-threatening. Now to some weather. We are see seeing some unseasonably warm temperatures in the bluegrass, and those temperatures could near record highs for this time of year once we hit our weekends. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Chris? You know, a lot of folks really like this weather. Obviously, if you're trying to get in the holiday and Christmas spirit, you're probably not liking this weather uh, too much. At least today kind of looks the part. If you're inside looking out, it's a little gloomy. We have some clouds. Then you step outside, and this is what you're feeling. Temperatures that are still anywhere from 10 to 15 degrees above those normal high temperatures for an afternoon into the middle of December. 55 Lexington, 60 London, Jackson, Prestonsburg. 
Southeastern Kentucky at 61 degrees. Live sky cam, a lot of overcast conditions continuing to show up across the entire area. A little earlier, yeah, we did find a peak or two of sunshine. It did not last a long time. Defender Radar Network, a lot of clouds. Notice a little juice now trying to develop north of the Evansville area. And late tonight, early tomorrow morning, anyone is fair game for a light shower or two. And then we focus on that weekend warm-up courtesy of a big storm system that will roll our way. It will have warm air near record temperatures and a lot of gusty winds. We'll break down what all to expect with this when I come back in a few minutes. Newly released numbers show the drug fentanyl is outpacing heroin for overdose deaths in Fayette County. Fentanyl is known to be 30 to 50 times more potent than heroin. In Fayette County, the number of overdose deaths jumped from 19 last year to 53 so far this year. The U.S. attorney says most people don't realize they're getting fentanyl. Dealers use it in place of other drugs. It is a killer, and it is in every neighborhood in Lexington. It is in every community in central Kentucky, and we are seeing it imported to our communities in increasing numbers. Tonight at 6, you'll hear from a woman who lost her sister this year to a fentanyl overdose and what the U.S. Attorney's Office is trying to do about it. Jennifer, thank you. So we have seen a dramatic increase in the number of these fentanyl overdoses mm -hmm. here in Lexington. Yeah, you know, last year you were at 19. This year already they've had 53. Wow. And you think about it, the number of heroin overdose deaths has stayed the same. So that's pushing all total overdose deaths up even more. So this is just continuing this drug epidemic. It's a drug we've been talking about a lot um, and authorities have had their eye on it for a while, but it's really stayed under the radar. Right. And the U.S. attorney was saying, you know, a couple of years ago, he was hearing about it from his colleagues in other districts and hoping it wouldn't come here. And now it is here. And the thing about fentanyl is a lot of times they are mixing it with other drugs. It'll look like a prescription pill or it'll look like heroin. So it's very deceiving to people. And obviously, as we had mentioned, it's much more potent than most of the normal drugs out there so they can be one time and that's it. Really hits home when we talk to these people that have experienced it tonight. You're talking to a woman out of Woodford County whose sister died of a fentanyl overdose. And you know this was a situation where she had struggled for about five years with prescription drugs and heroin and took fentanyl one time and that was that was the only time um, and, and she didn't know she was getting fentanyl apparently. So mm -hmm. we'll talk more about that and hear her story coming up at six. All right we'll see that story tonight at six. Miranda thank you Jennifer. Thank you, Amber. A six year old Kentucky boy is the talk of his school because of his new robo hand. Connie Leonard has his story. I heard him say to his mom one day, we were in the car, he said, Mom, when will I ever get a robo hand? And it just, it just got to me. So then Julie wrote a letter to the University of Louisville. Bioengineering professor Gina Bertocci and three teams of students designed and created prototypes for Lucas with open source software on the internet. Then they used cutting edge 3D printing facilities at U of L. They came up with three hands for Lucas, and during the first week of December, he tried them out. I'm happy that I have this hand because. Um, I've never had a robo hand before, and now I can pick up with this hand. Small things many of us take for granted, a big deal for mom and dad. The most exciting part was seeing him catch that ball and throw it with that arm for the first time. Just a minute ago, he just waved to me, and he waved with the robo hand, which he's never done before. The light up on his face with a smile and everything was indescribable. It was amazing to actually see that influence somebody's life. Lucas can close the fingers with the flex of his wrist. The bigger orange and black hand is great for throwing a ball or holding a cup. The red and black Spider-Man hand can pick up smaller things. And the green hand glows in the dark and even has a flashlight. It was really cool when I walked in school and everybody was like, whoa, look at that hand. That's super cool. Let's just say the Bowen Elementary student got a lot of requests, not just for handshakes. I wanted to do a fish bump high five shake it. And you were able to do it all, right? Yeah. Today is a very special day for me. How come? I've never been on TV. <laughs> It's been a big week for him. Well, the bionic hand can be designed and printed again as Lucas continues to grow. It takes between 30 to 40 hours to print and 12 hours to assemble and only takes about 40 to $50 worth of materials to create one. 
Governor Matt Bevin has named a new state justice secretary. Democratic State Representative John Tilley of Hopkinsville has been named to the key post in the Bevin administration. Tilley's appointment pulls another possible House seat into play in a special election where Democrats hold a razor thin majority. Tilley is a 46 year old lawyer who has chaired the House Judiciary Committee. The award season is in full swing with the announcement of the Golden Globe Award nominations. We'll take a look at the top contenders 